So I just want to point out, since the end of October, Bitcoin, the S&P 500, TLT are all up about 5%. TLT is the number one kind of ETF that tracks the bond market. I think that's somewhat unsustainable. And crude oil is down 5%. To me, that's sustainable. What's unsustainable, I think, is both the SPY and TLT going up at the same pace. Now, James pointed out to me what part of what I think is happening in this great reset I ta started talking about a year ago, which I think now is entering the... Um, end of the beginning stage. We're just getting started with all the rate central banks are done hiking. We're seeing the problem with the auctions with way too much supply. Why do we have way too much supply? Because we did way too much fiscal stimulus, which was offset with more restraint from hiking rates. And I look at this as just the tilt starting to kick lower. So let's just see what's happened in the last few weeks. In today's rapidly evolving financial landscape, Bitcoin plays a more crucial role than ever as a digital gold and a hedge against economic instability. Renowned Bloomberg intelligence analyst, Mike McGlone, delves deep into current market trends, providing invaluable insights into Bitcoin's potential trajectory amid global economic uncertainty. The looming possibility of a global recession has intensified the scrutiny on both traditional and digital assets, with governments and central banks grappling with policy decisions. Investors and enthusiasts are closely monitoring Bitcoin's response to these macroeconomic shifts. McGlone elaborates on Bitcoin's comparative performance against other assets, particularly in a risk-adjusted context. His analysis, juxtaposed with recent economic developments, offers a comprehensive understanding of Bitcoin's current standing and how it might navigate the uncertainties of tomorrow. Notably, recent shifts in traditional markets, such as fluctuating bond yields and the stock market's ups and downs, have positioned Bitcoin as a notable player. It often defies traditional market correlations, pointing to its growing maturity and appeal as a hedge against economic instability. Stay tuned as we delve further into the video. The thing, other thing I wanted to point out, as, as I was, you might have saw me typing when we were talking, looking at this, is you look at volatility in Bitcoin versus TLT, annualized or annual measure, it's the lowest ever, it's about 2%. So that's one key problem I've had with Bitcoin versus Bitcoin versus um, SPY. It's about 3% times, I mean, three times that volatility, but it's just dropped it to, to a new low. In Bitcoin versus gold, it's about three times. So that's one thing I'm really worried about when we get this normal correction in the stock market for a recession. We still haven't had it. And that's why I like to point out is on the, since the month is great, it's great to be bullish Bitcoin, but the S&P 500 on a risk adjusted basis is up a lot more because it trades, you know, um, Bitcoin's three times the volatility and up about the same. Now that's in the end of October. That's a key thing. I mean, I'm, I'm, Obviously, tilt a little bit more bullish Bitcoin, but I'm really concerned of, of there's so much of that hopium that Bitcoin's going to go up for an ETF. And I look at it, well, TLT's up and SPOI's up, and they trade at a fraction of the volatility Bitcoin does. The Fed um, always has injected liquidity since 1950. See, every time the S&P 500 is down 20% on a 12-month basis, the Fed is always eased. One exception, 1988, because it was after the crash. So that's what's changed. But you have to be assuming and expecting that'll happen. But you need the risk assets to go down first. That hasn't happened. That's just been my premise. Key thing is Bitcoin's broken above 30,000. That's what I needed to see a sign of strength. But it's still doing it for, to me, the wrong reasons. All risk assets are going up. That's the problem. I want to see it go up when risk assets go down, like SP 500 still up 15% on the year. So that to me is still what I'm worried about happening is you're just getting more gamma and you have a higher delta in Bitcoin. You want to see, I think, what you're saying to happen. That just has, we haven't had the test yet. That's what I'm worried about. So that's why I still stick with the hardest thing to do for, I think, type A's investors is not, I should not so do not do so much do nothing. So look over that U.S. government treasury two you note know, and the teen, the 10 you notes and the entire curve, it gives you 5% and say, thank you very much. And I think that's a hard thing and people are not going to realize how to do that until resets go down. The key thing I think is we haven't had that scenario Yet, we did a little bit last year, and you saw the example. Everything went down. We destroyed the altcoins, and I think they're destroyed forever, with the exception of maybe a few, which you've mentioned, um, because there's so many silly ones. Um, but we haven't – this. let's just look at this year to date. You look at the screens, you're like, okay, all risk assets are up. Bond yields, bond prices are, yields are up. Bond prices are down. And Bitcoin's leading. Okay, well, that's the exact opposite of last year. So I'm just pointing, yes, there's good reason for that. Now we have this ETF coming, but um, that's, again, it's, it, I agree with the fundamental, big picture, like I said. But we haven't had this normal correction for recession in the stock market. And I think the point is now we're at the stage that 
um, since most economists think it's not going to happen and the Fed's kept tightening it all, my, most of my demand indicators and look at things we all love is bottoming unemployment. The Psalms rule, it's just getting started. That um, when markets are in place and most economists think it's different this time, that's your opportunity. Moody's Investor Service just issued a stark reminder to the Biden White House that the stakes are rapidly escalating. On November 10th, the last credit rating company to grant Washington AAA status hinted that a downgrade might be imminent and swift. Moody's pointed to the U.S. debt exceeding $33 trillion, with political polarization causing chaos and fiscal management. This development introduces an uncomfortable subplot to Biden's presence on the sidelines of this week's Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit. Amid the challenges Biden faces, including slowing growth, property sector defaults, deflation, and aging demographics, the looming threat of a Moody's downgrade adds to the complexity of the situation. Despite dealing with issues in Beijing, Biden must contend with daunting odds to prevent Moody's from dealing his administration a potentially humiliating blow. Now, let's delve into Moody's analysis of the labor market, unemployment rates, CPI, and PPI to gain insights into the broader economic landscape. Because I've read so much about this this weekend and I deliberately ignored it because there's so much about long term and short term and all that stuff. And I just, the lesson I learned years ago is okay, I just get confuzzled with those kind of things. And unemployment's going up. <laughs> I mean, the, all, all the stuff in between, it's like I let the economy. I'm going to deal with, but I want to really point out to me the thing I had to publish on today. It's the idiot versus genius genius factor. And last year, I felt like a complete idiot for a while and saying crude oil is going to go down. Now I'm feeling like a genius, which means it's probably bottom. But you got to get to those extremes, <laughs> and that's why I think next year, I have a, I feel like a complete idiot in TLT right now. And I felt that way in GBTC at the end of last year. And look what happened. I think that's what's going to revert next. Year. I think that TLT, since I have the complete idiot feel feeling that it's going to be one of the best performers next year. And I hoping um, Bitcoin can go up with that, but the, the tilt is all there. Well, what, Sometimes what, it what, just takes what, one day but, for the but, flip. But ask yourself this question, Mike, and what is the factor that drives TLT to go higher? Simple one word, recession. So we do have CPI this week. It's expected to drop to 3.3%. Our firm, our economists are taking the under on that. Um, but remember the peak was around 9%. And what's Fed funds? 5.5%. What's the body in motion? Here's one good example. PPI's low this year is 3.1%, negative. That's deflationary. You know what the high was in 2008? Plus 10 or 9.9%. .9%. We are tilting towards severe deflation and the Fed's still hiking rates. The Fed started cutting rates in 2007. And I have to push back on Dave a little bit because what he said about the 1970s is completely not true. That took decades. I've been rereading the Empire of Wealth for the third time. It took decades to get that. We both live that. Remember the energy crisis. What got this inflation was one simple thing that's completely reversed. The biggest pump in liquidity in the history of mankind is now going back on the sharpest rate hikes ever. We're just getting started. That's my great reset. So it's the simple rules of, of uh, Milton Friedman and, and too much money creates inflation. Now we have negative M2 money supply. We have the tilt towards deflation. The Fed's still hiking and we're just getting started. So I like to say this is the beginning of the end of the great reset. What we're going to see starting next year is is the true deflationary, um, true recession now starting in Europe. You see the data latest out of China and all my data for the US except for the stock market are pointing towards, okay, this is early days. Well, they probably won't, but they're, they're, the key thing is what's the next trigger to make them ease? And we all know, here's yeah. the thing, core CPI, core is running 4%, their target's 2%. It's very simple, unless you get a significant crash or breakdown or something to really break, there's no reason for them to ease even think about it. It's just the way that's what's changed versus everything I grew up with when they would always ease when there was, you know, a reason to to, to do it. Right now, inflation is 4.1. It's the back. It's to me, it's it's the it's a classic lagging effect of the biggest wealth effect in history still trickling down. And one of the biggest fiscal stimulus periods ever without a war recession, just starting to tilt towards what the normal repercussions. In the U.S., inflation, measured by the Consumer Price Index, dropped to 3.2% annually in October, below market expectations and September's rate of 3.7%. The core CPI, excluding volatile food and energy prices, increased by 4%, slightly below analysts' estimates of 4.1%. Notably, the index for shelter rose, offsetting a decline in the gasoline index, resulting in a steady seasonally adjusted index for the month. The energy index fell by 2.5%, with a 5% decline in the gasoline index outweighing other energy component increases. Analyzing the data's impact on markets, the CPI report, coupled with a modest growth of 150,000 jobs in October according to the non-farm payrolls report, contributes to a nuanced economic outlook. A soft landing scenario, 
with lower rates and robust consumer demand, is seen as favorable for stocks. Despite conflicting data, a recession is not currently expected, and the Federal Reserve is anticipated to maintain interest rates between 5.25% and 5.5%. While Fed Chairman Jerome Powell emphasizes a data-dependent approach, analyst Mike Mlow foresees a recession gaining momentum by early next year, offering a cautious perspective on the macroeconomy despite his bullish stance on Bitcoin. For more Daily Dose crypto news, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.